line. I keep hearing this. I've watched Russ Wilson, Russell Wilson in Seattle with bad old lines and rookie receivers and undrafted tight ends and seventh round running backs. God, he just elevate. They're all good. If I got to hear that Aaron Rodgers doesn't have enough weapons again, I don't want to hear it. I watched them yesterday. You're good enough to drop 44 in the Vikings. Your weapons are fine. Devontae Adams is a top three receiver in the NFL. He's a beast. You can't cover him. Devontae Adams is a superstar wide receiver. You have a top four offensive line, according to Pro Football Focus. Aaron Jones is a top five or six running back. You have multiple receivers who can play. Uh, Valdez Scantling is one of the fastest guys in the league. He drops him occasionally, but he's super fast. Uh, Alan uh, um, Lazard is more than good enough as a number three wide receiver. If In the NFL, if you have a top 5 line, a superstar receiver, a star back, that's enough. Now, they, they do a lot of 11 personnel. They do one tight end. They do not throw to the tight end much. They didn't throw to Jimmy Graham much. So that's just their offense. Aaron doesn't throw to the tight end a lot. That's just how Aaron is. But, like, if you can drop 44, like, I'm, I'm overhearing about how Green Bay doesn't have enough weapons. You start looking at where Russell Wilson's weapons come from. They're not good. They're undrafted tight ends. They're gadget guys in college. Doug Baldwin was undrafted. DK Metcalf dropped in the draft. He's great with Russell. It's a quarterback's job to elevate the weapons. Occasionally in your career, I mean, Tom Brady played 20 years in New England. He had two years where he had everything. He had Welker. He had a slot guy. Then he had Randy Moss. Then he had Dante Stallworth. And then he started getting good tight ends, Gronk and Hernandez. Tom, in 20 years, had about a two- or three-year window where he really had everything. Protection, a deep threat, a slot guy, solid backs. That's not, that's not the way it works. Like, I got news for you. Patrick Mahomes, in 20 years, is going to have years without a functional tight end, and his top two receivers are hurt. It's your job as a quarterback. I don't want to hear Green Bay didn't have weapons. They're not Kansas City. They're good enough. You give me a top five all on a star receiver, star back. Now it's up to me to elevate the. There's ever been a time I liked more quarterbacks, but I'm telling you, the guys now, Lamar Mahomes and Russell Wilson, are frightening. Like they can move, they can run, they can throw, they're playmakers. I like Jared Goff, but Sean McVay protects him. I like Jimmy Garoppolo, but the coach protects him. I like Carson Wentz, but his highs are highs and his lows are lows. I like Deshaun Watson. But again, highs are highs, lows can be really low, and he doesn't feel like this group. I mean, I'm watching Russell Wilson yesterday. Uh, that is one of the greatest performances. I, I mean, he was flawless. And they got bad offensive line play on the road against a Pro Bowl quarterback. Lamar Jackson, I, I just kind of feel like I don't have a top five quarterback list. I've got a top three, and they're separating. Again, Brady and Breeze are good when everything is going right. Wentz and Deshaun and Rodgers can be spectacular. But Aaron leaves way too much on the field. He didn't yesterday. Deshaun doesn't throw a beautiful ball. And he has, like Wentz, some really bad moments. These guys are sick. They're just unbelievable. You get all the ceiling, very, very rarely get the lows. I mean, they're, they're, they're playmakers. So you're going to make mistakes because you're just I mean, yesterday, Lamar took a shot in the sideline. And I'm like, oh, dude, get out of bounds. But I, um, a lot of what I see yesterday doesn't stick. I, I got a top three quarterback list. And then four is about six guys, depending on who they play. Aaron yesterday was spectacular. I don't think he's going to look like the rest of the year like that. But I wouldn't be surprised if Lamar has 12 more Sundays like that or Mahomes has 12 more Sundays or Russell's got 12 more Sundays like that. I don't think Aaron, Wentz, or Deshaun will. They feel like they've separated. I mean, just, just they just are, you can't take your eyes off them. Uh, here's the other thing. Um, so I, I picked Baltimore to win the Super Bowl and uh, they look great, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, again, they were going to win that game. It was the only game this way. I, I wouldn't even touch the Jags-Colts game. The only game I predicted a blowout I said, come on, you got to give me a break on this. Cleveland's got a new coach. Cleveland's not as good. Uh, Baltimore, Cleveland beat Baltimore last year, so Baltimore is not going to overlook Cleveland. It was a blowout. It wasn't close. Two things I take away from that game. Number one, Baltimore's fantastic. They would have blown out a lot of teams in the NFL yesterday. So let's not bury Cleveland, okay? They, 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 Baltimore is packed. They're, they're you, dynamic, physical, uh, they didn't even run the football particularly well yesterday. They're still dropping points. They could have gone to their third stringers, backups by the third quarter. 
Baltimore is a, in a salary cap era, that's about as good as a roster can be. They got deep threats. They got tight ends. They got a star quarterback. They got a good old line. They got star corners. They got a star pass rusher. In a salary cap league, they got everything. They got everything. But the second thing, you can keep changing head coaches. Baker Mayfield's the same guy. Number one, he continues to think he's way more athletic than he is. Tries to run around. He's not. Number two, he still has no relationship with OBJ. Was it 13 targets, 10 targets, three catches? It doesn't click. Baker still wildly inconsistent. Um, His accuracy, which was a strength at Oklahoma, is all over the map. He sails the ball way too much. This football team in Cleveland, you can keep changing the coaches. You got a limited quarterback. Mistake prone, not as accurate as he should be, not as athletic as he thinks he is. And they ran the ball very effectively yesterday with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. They had like 123 yards. That's what they are. That is what they are. And I think Buffalo's figured it out. They like Josh Allen, but they're not led by Josh Allen. Uh, you know, most teams with young quarterback. Now, now Arizona's different. They're, they just, Kyler, go save us. But when I watch Cleveland, you can keep changing everything. But they were a mess early. They were a mess late. Uh, OBJ and Baker have no relationship. And Baker's got to get out of this feeling that he's some, like, athletic guy, hyper-athletic, can move around. Dude, you're, you're a guy that throws well on third and two. Pick it, stick it, get it done, get it out, get the ball away faster. Don't hold on to it. That's not your game plan. But I still think Cleveland can go 9-7. and seven. I'm not bailing because I think Baltimore would have blown out everybody but Kansas City maybe yesterday or Seattle. Uh, they would have rolled everybody yesterday. But you can keep changing coaches. I, I see the same Baker. I saw more potential with Joe Burrow in his first game. He's bigger than Baker. He throws a better ball than Baker. He's more athletic than Baker. He feels more poised. He feels more consistent, more calm. Um, I, I, I just look at Cleveland and I'm like, you know, Baker afterwards on the, on the Ravens. Here's what he said. Sometimes a wake up call is pretty good for everybody. Um, you know, a nice, nice punch in the mouth and that's how we should take it. We should, uh, you know, not dwell on it. Realize that, uh, we just got beat today. They, they played better than us. Look at it and get better, move on and, uh, go play the Bengals. That's all we can do. I don't think it's a punch in the mouth moment. I think it's a realize what you are and play to your strengths moment. And and by the way, I know what you're going to say. What about Sam Darnold? He doesn't have these weapons. He doesn't have anything close to this. The Jets have a completely rebuilt offensive line, four new starters, and they're not high-end guys. One's a rookie and the other guys are kind of like bounce around the league guys. These are not superstar offensive linemen. So, you know, I, I didn't think it was a punch in the mouth moment. I thought it was a, a moment of clarity, which is, if Baker's going to be thrown at 35 times in these games, this is what it's going to look like. This is what it's going to look like. He's going to be running around more than he should, inaccurate more than he should. And let's stop pretending OBJ and Baker work. It, it doesn't work. They've had a billion practices. They've had a bunch of games. It doesn't work. This is why I think, I think OBJ, I think Baker feels like he's got to get him the football, and I think it distracts him. I think it gets him out of his kind of rhythm. OBJ is a great trade piece. I'd be happy if he went there. They, Cleveland doesn't need another great receiver. What Cleveland needs to do is just pound the rock, throw it on third and two. 